Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. We are apparently about halfway through Bedtime Tales by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. And I'm saying that based on my bookmark. I'm actually going to look at page numbers. So, last time we were on page 73. And last story is on page 144. So, yeah. About halfway through. But it's snack time. Our next story is the Big Jam Sandwich. Mmm. That guy looks rather happy. Oh, there's a Big Jam Sandwich involved. <laughs> there was once a giant called James. He looked terrifying. But in fact, he was very gentle. Although he looked as if he'd eat a whole regiment of soldiers for dinner, he was really a vegetarian. And that means he didn't eat meat just in case nobody knew what a vegetarian was back when this was written. Yeah, probably wasn't a common thing like it is now. Nevertheless, when James walked toward the town, everyone else ran away screaming. James found it very upsetting. Now one day, James decided to do something about it. So he invited all the townsfolk to a party. I can't make little cookies, he explained on his invitation, so I'm afraid you'll have to make do with a giant sandwich instead. Everyone gathered in the town square. It's not a sandwich, but us that'll be on the menu, said the mayor. Then why'd you guys show up? Yeah, well, maybe they're in the town square deciding because it doesn't look like there's going to be a town square where that sandwich is being made. <laughs> All the same, nobody dared to refuse the invitation. Ah, out of fear. If you're afraid you're going to get eaten, why are you going to go to the location where you believe that's going to happen? Because they're afraid he's going to come after them if they don't go? Yeah. Uh, they all crept out of the town and up the hill to the giant's cave. There they could see James cutting up two enormous slices of bread. But what will the middle be? Asked the miller anxiously. Suddenly a delicious smell of strawberry jam came wafting down. The giant was making the town a huge jam sandwich. Yummy! They all cried and ran to join James for his party. Is that really the end? That's really the end. Apparently nobody is concerned that human flesh and strawberry jam could go together. Huh. Yeah, that's... Also, I'd be like, bread, man, that's a lot of... That's big bread. He would only have to, like, make one sandwich for everyone. Exactly. It, he, he says that, that he can't make little cookies, so you'll have to make do with a giant sandwich instead. It was in the invitation. Yeah, I, I just wish he would have made one giant cookie. Well, maybe he can't bake. Ah. Also, I can understand having a giant loaf of bread because he could have made the bread, which does cut back on the, oh, he can't bake. But where did the giant jar of jam come from? Because you know the town isn't making giant-sized food. Mm -hmm. So yeah. where did he get the jar? Even if he made the jam himself, where did he get the jar? Where did he get the jam? Maybe there's other giants he interacts with. He just happens to like that town. All right. Pencil sharpener. Hmm. Wow. Uh, just, we go from a jam sandwich to a pencil sharpener. Hmm. Rashid's pencil needed sharpening. So he twisted the pencil in his dinosaur-shaped pencil sharpener until it had a lovely sharp point. Rashid started to draw, but the pencil lead was so long and thin that it broke and Rashid had to sharpen the pencil all over again. Round and round went Rashid's pencil and the dinosaur sharpener, till once again he had a lovely sharp point. Then, crack! The lead broke. By the time Rashid had sharpened it again, the pencil was half the size. Gently, said his teacher, or you'll have no pencil left. This time, Rashid drew very, very gently indeed, and finished his picture which was a drawing of a very large dinosaur. Okay, so he used a dinosaur pencil sharpener to sharpen his pencil where he drew a dinosaur. Yes. Hmm. That makes perfect sense. Also, that's really cheap pencil lead, because even with a sharp point, I usually don't end up with the pencil breaking, though I switched to mechanical pencils after a while, especially in college. I used a lot of mechanical pencils in college. Well, it was a lot easier because you didn't have to worry about losing your pencil sharpener. It was just all in one. Yeah, I always bought the ones with the .9 lead. Or the 0.7 lead, because the 0.5 broke a lot. Okay, photographs. We have a lot of things as titles this time. Ben had a new camera. 
He liked taking pictures of all the family. Sometimes he was a bit impatient and took a picture of mom with her eyes closed or dad with only half an arm. But soon he had quite a collection. Mom, dad, big sister Maria, and baby Sarah. He even had one of the goldfish. One day, there was a school project. It was called My Family. Ben thought and thought about what he could do. I could make a poster of the family pictures, he suggested. I have an even better idea, said Mom. Come with me. Ben and Mom went up to the attic. Mom pulled out an old trunk and opened it. It was full of old photographs, some of them very faded and brown. This is me as a baby, said Mom, and here's Dad on a school field trip. Oh, look, Grandma's wedding. And that's your great-granddad in his army uniform. And your wedding, too, said Ben, pointing to a picture. Why don't you make a family tree, asked Mom. You can glue on a picture for each relative. Glue, photos, anyone else wincing? Shh. So Ben and Mom gathered together a pile of pictures of Granddad, Grandma, Mom, Dad, and all his aunts, uncles, and cousins. Then Ben took a huge sheet of paper. He printed Great Granddad's name on it and drew a line underneath with all his children's names. There was a picture for each member of the family, even though some of them were rather fuzzy. And right at the bottom were Ben's very own snapshots, including the one of the goldfish, if you look at the photo. Yep. Though I wouldn't have drawn a line from his parents to the goldfish because, yeah, I don't think that goldfish is genetically related. No. But it was nice to include it because the topic of the school project is my family. He wasn't required to do a family tree. Unlike the yesterday and today and tomorrow school project where it was only genetic relatives. I mean, all those old photographs, the mom knew they were there in the attic. Why aren't they in albums? I mean, I know this is before we could scan them all and have backups and restore them through Photoshop, but at least put them in albums so they wouldn't get curled. Or something else to protect them. Also, um, maybe they have the original negatives of these photos, so that's why it's okay to glue them to this uh, poster. One could hope. Garden treasure. It was spring. Rashid and Dad were in the yard. Didn't we just talk to Rashid like two pages ago? Yeah, yeah. His, his pencil needed sharpening. Also, I think he was the one with the triangle, the oh. missing triangle. Hey, more connections. Mm -hmm. Rashid was helping Dad to work in the vegetable patch. Wouldn't it be nice if we found some treasure, said Rashid. And just then, he dug up an old coin. What a coincidence. There you are, said Dad. Real treasure. Is it gold? asked Rashid hopefully. Clean it and see, said Dad. Rashid took the coin to Mom. She began to rub it clean. That's not what your father said to do. Your father said clean the coin. He did not say go make your mother do it. Hmm. Is it a gold coin? Asked Rashid. Mom burst out laughing. Not exactly. English more like, she said. It's an English pound coin. Dad must have dropped it when he came back from vacation there. But it's yours now. I'll put it in a safe place, said Rashid. And perhaps one day I'll find some real treasure. Hmm. Interesting. Also, we got a nice picture of him in the garden finding the coin, and also, what a coincidence. Like, I wish we could find some treasure. Dig up. I found a coin. <laughs> Apparently, the universe was listening. Mm-hmm. Talking doll. Oh, this isn't going to be creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as long as it doesn't follow you around. I swear that doll's looking at me. Yeah, and as long as it's not named Tina. I'm not quite sure what she's referring to, but it's probably horrific. <laughs> Not as bad as it could be because it was Twilight Zone. Ah! Though that reminds me, they're doing a reboot of Chucky. No thanks. Yeah, as in Child's Play, just to name the movie correctly. <laughs> I would think with the context it would be a given, but still. Angela had a talking doll. If you pulled a string in its back, it would say, Hello, Mommy, and sing Baba Black Sheep. Angela was thrilled about the doll. She kept pulling its string until the whole family was tired of its voice. I wish it could say something else, grumbled her brother Kevin. I'm sick of hearing Baba Black Sheep. I'm sick of singing it, said the doll. What? Kevin gasped in astonishment. You can really talk, said Angela. I say what children want to hear, said the doll. And nobody in the toy store ever complained about Baba Black Sheep. 
How about Puddle Town Fight Song? Asked Kevin, who liked football. Magical doll. Ask it to sing your oi. Or We Three Kings, said Angela, who loved carols. I could do both, said the doll. Football game one day, carols the next. And that's what happened. Kevin and Angela felt a bit silly carrying the doll to the football game, but everyone was very impressed by its enthusiasm as it cheered on the high school team. And in church the next day, the whole congregation sat and chanted while a little doll-like voice soared to the rafters with the sounds of We Three Kings. And then they took it and burned it at the stake. Uh, because it's a church, and if they ever found out that thing was talking on its own, I don't think it would survive. <laughs> they would scream, Devil! Devil, burn it! Kill it! Kill it with fire! So, no, that actually wasn't creepy, but still, you're like, the doll, the doll talked? <laughs> well, we've already had some stories with talking toys. Mm, but apparently nothing from the people. Because, you know, Mr. Noah is missing the doll's tea party. All right, next story. The Novelty Teapot. There was nothing Miss Weatherby liked more than a nice cup of tea. For years, she had used the same brown teapot, which had belonged to her mother before her. Then one day, she broke the teapot. I must go out and buy another immediately, said Mrs. Weatherby. There was a special store in town that sold good tea in lots of different teapots. Now, I could get another brown teapot, said Miss Weatherby, but I think I'll get something really crazy. And do you know what she chose? A wonderful teapot shaped like a giraffe, with the spout at the end of his long neck and his tail curled to form a handle. And what is more, Miss Weatherby swore that the tea tasted better from her giraffe teapot than from her ordinary old brown one. Which may have been uh, stained or what, what was it called? Seasoned? Seasoned? Yes, depending on whether or not it was sealed. Because mm. there's a type of teapot, I'll butcher the pronunciation, but called yixing, where it's not sealed on the inside. And you only ever use one type of tea with it and you never wash it with soap. Ever. Also, the angle she's holding that teapot at wouldn't pour. Definitely not. It, it would if it was a short Necked teapot, but not for a giraffe. Nope. Cute, though. Yep. All right. And this has been another installment of Bedtime Tales, written by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. And in case you're wondering, no, I don't necessarily count the number of stories. I don't decide in advance how many I'm going to read. I just start reading and I look at the timer and go, hmm, that seems about right. So... Uh, if you haven't picked this up yet and you'd like to, uh, there should be a link for it below. If you've missed previous installments, there's a playlist for that. There's a playlist for all the other books. Several, you know, there's the master one of everything in the order recorded, and then there's the ones broken down by type, franchise, subject, you know, all that good stuff. And because it's my section of the channel, my Ebates link... Am I just wasting my time? Seriously, absolutely no one to date has signed up using that link. Ah, uh, we can keep putting it there. Eventually someone will. Yeah, you know, I thought cash back on purchases at stores you shop at anyways was a value-added thing. Because, you know, there are bookstores on there. Anyway, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.